Hey, good morning, YouTube. It is Friday, August 17th. Yes. I'm um, sick with the 7th. No, 18th. 18th, my apologies. So here we have one of my honeypot queens that I caught back on July 13th. So just uh, a hair over a month ago. And as you can see, and this is a competition or the comparison I was doing between the test tube setup and let's see if I get a little better angle here. The test tube setup and uh, the Tar Hill Ants Mini Hearth. So within one month, I have got uh, some Nenectic. So it looks like a total of three with my honey pot colony. And uh, for those of you guys that do follow me, I've been, and I apologize, it's relatively early. It's still about 5 a.m. <clears throat> I'm still waking up. But for those of you that have been following, I've been doing a comparison between um, the same species of ant caught within three days of each other that I'm doing four in a test tube, four in a mini hearth, just to, uh, just to determine um, what setup uh, is more conducive to a successful colony. Um, so as you can see, and I first noticed, uh, these three Nenictics, and I'm not looking at them every day, you know, when I first started ant keeping a couple of years ago, I look at them multiple times every day. Now I tend to, um, let them be and, uh, look at them once a week or so. So on the 14th, uh, so that was earlier this week, I first noticed, um, uh, the Nenictics and, uh, I was going to wait till the weekend, but this morning I felt, nah, why don't I? Well, I'll go ahead and do a quick video. So, as you can see, we do have three uh, Nenectics there. Now, looking at one of my test tube queens, I noticed on the 16th, which was Wednesday, today's the 18th, so two days ago, that I have got... Nenictics. Now, out of the eight queens that I'm tracking, only one in the test tube has Nenictics, and only one in the mini hearth has um, Nenictics. So, um, right now, I would have to say it's pretty much a tie. Now, with this particular colony, it looks like we're, we've got... More, I'm trying to count. So I'm seeing one, two, three, four. I want to say I've got five. That's what it looks like. And in the lower right there, you can see a brand new ant, very light in color. And those are always, in my opinion. And there's another one up there. I want to say it's five. But, um,. Looks to me like we got maybe six. Yeah, it looks like we got four in the bottom there and two at tops of six. So, uh, you know, and these, this queen was caught three days after the previous one I showed you a moment ago in the mini hurt. So this one is um, slightly, uh, slightly newer. But as you can see, they're doing, um, they're doing well. And while I'm at it, I'd like to show off, I think, and I'm, hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly, Cremagester, uh, Cremagester, I think I'm getting that right. Um, she was caught right around the same time. Yeah, it looks like I yeah, overfilled the water tower. I always seem to do that with this one. But anyway, um, um yeah, this, this queen, I saw her walking uh, across the sidewalk, thought she was dead or dying, but I went ahead and collected her nonetheless. And um, she is doing, as you can see, very well. Out of the ants I caught this season, she's probably doing the best. 
uh, from the standpoint of uh, brood and uh, nictic. So and there's quite a few ants that are outside of the camera view right now. So she's doing this. This colony's doing very well. And this will be my first. And thank you to all of you on YouTube uh, helping me identify this queen. So you all believe it's a uh, uh, Cremagester. Probably pronounced that incorrectly, but um, um, but yeah, I'm definitely excited uh, to have a a new ant and do my research trying to figure out what this species is about. From what I can tell, it's more of a tree dwelling, but. Um, yeah, I'm going to do some more research and eventually get them into a larger formicarium. Uh, they are definitely, you know, she is reproducing relatively quickly, so. Yeah. They are very, very small. Yeah, if the grid in the background is a, a quarter inch per square. To give you kind of Kind of context, I mean, these guys are very, very small. And guys, just to wrap up this video, I wanted to show off um, one of my, not original, but one I caught um, last year, September of 2016, my larger um, honeypot colony. A little dirty down there, but these, let's see if I get a better angle here. So this is a setup that I um, worked out with Tar Heel Lance, where I was able to connect a mini hearth to a fortress. With room for uh, growth, I can add another nest off off this one that will magnetically attach. Um, what I wanted to show you is the difference in size, since I've got both a mature colony and a um, um, a young colony. Now, well, not mature, but mature, but it's it's fascinating to see the um, the size difference. And if I was any good at editing, I would just, you know, edit this in, but uh, I am not, as you guys know. But So we can see here are the Nenictics in relation to the Queen. You know, I can definitely see the difference. Somebody's, they're definitely not liking that. I can definitely see the difference in the size. It's going to probably be very difficult from the video. Um, the the nanictics from this are, are incredibly small in comparison to what I've got here, um, which, as we know, is is expected. But it's fascinating to see. So they are all gathered up there near the water tower. Or not the water tower, but the um, the nest mate. So where I supply a chunk of the water. Let's go ahead and look at the look at the old nest. And move down. So little experiment here. Um, they were quickly outgrowing growing this nest um, and um, you know I've just through experience I've had a very very difficult time moving this particular species in the past so I wanted to have a way of connecting them to a larger nest but also not trying to force them to move so you know, we connected the expanding shape or June of this year so we're well, we're 
or August of 18, I, so two months ago, or August 18, sorry guys, it's so early, <coughs> excuse me, and, um, you know, the, the queen moves back and forth between the two nests, um, I've had some of the repletes move over, some that they've tried to move, so as you can see, all the big repletes are now gone, uh, I had to actually remove one the other day that looked like it died and was starting to mold up, so I had to chill these guys and then um, I remove the glass, remove that, that ant. But um, I'm happy to see that there's some brood in here because I know this was kind of a traumatic move for them. Um, so I see some brood, that's always good. I think the queen's over here somewhere. I didn't see her in the new nest or the expansion chamber, but nonetheless, they're you know they're kind of moving over there as they as they like, which which I'm okay with. And there were some some repletes, no big ones over here yet, but uh, but yeah. The water tower on this one really sagged. I've I've let Tar Heel Ants know it's too late to do anything about it, but yeah, it, uh, for whatever reason, it's sagging really bad. So, so it looks like there are some repletes. Let me see if I can get a better angle here and kind of see one. Yeah. I'm going to hold on real quick. So there we go. I had to, didn't see these guys initially, but yeah, they're, and that's exactly what I was looking for. We built this. I wanted a big dome chamber, you know, for my, for my repletes to hang from. And um, some good young repletes up there. So that is very promising. Zoom in, nope. So hopefully they'll they'll be hanging here. It looks like they're feeding them, so that's very good. Okay, let's stop bugging them. That's the old dust. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I do appreciate the likes and shares and the comments. Thank you always. Have a great day.